Now, there's lots of opportunity there, obviously, for analyze, aggregating, analyzing, but also getting into various kinds of discussions with uh, customers or with suppliers. From there, I think it's just, you know, sensible and intelligent uh, process and work design to obtain the benefits of collaboration. I think companies have been doing this in one form or another for a long time. Uh, you know, again, coming back, making my points about whether it's quality circles or uh, Six Sigma or, you know, almost any kind of continuous improvement uh, initiative uh, has been looking actually for ways to collaborate. Uh, well, that, that that's the point. The, the, it becomes then a, a cultural point because what I wanted to say is that um, we, given that we've already been doing this in various forms, trying to improve for many years now, what is it that gets in the way? Before we could interact with a company, whether you're a supplier or a customer by, let's say, telephone call, you still can, uh, by mail, uh, by going and visiting or meeting, um, but they were all seen as formal channels and, and the frustration that built up over the years was that they were very, the company controlled and very rarely were um, these inputs acknowledged or used. And I, th I think, uh, I'm generalizing, making vast generalizations here, I think that my recollections uh, through the years of growing up is that when people did have their input acknowledged, whether that's by a response, a letter, a phone call, or, you know, maybe some kind of credit voucher or, a, you know, whatever the response is, they felt like they'd won a small victory. That's, I think, the kind of thing that needs to change. It needs to be seen as a natural and necessary as part of the service feedback loop that must be maintained at all times and at all costs. 